and for myself uh, it was good to go out with my um, my grandpa Jimmy and be able to listen to him and how he talks and you know just how he uh, does things uh, does things out in, on the land he does things differently and I try to observe everything he does to learn and why he does it and you know safety reasons and respectful reasons and it was good for myself and yeah when we went paddling me and uh, Archie as we're paddling down the river uh, we're drifting and looking down and we see jackfish the big jackfish right in the bottom of the river they're just sitting there waiting seems like they're waiting then as we went a little further down to the shallow water and there's a bunch of grillings uh, coming up there. So mm -hmm. that's what they're waiting for, yeah, something to eat. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're doing something right here and something happening down there in that little creek. Uh, the fish, they're having their fun too. <laughs> <laughs> the day before yesterday we were walking uh, through the bush going to you know, check out some water and how rich the land is here. Berries, cloud berries, blueberries, Shauna eating most of them. <laughs> Blackberries. It's just it's just so rich and then people are, you know, going out for moose, getting fish and, and telling stories about the land and, and it's rich in a way that that you know you can't even def describe what that word rich is until you see it. So I think that how friendly people are, how you know, real Satu people are, hmm. and how rich the land is. So the folks who came out to the creek with me, I um, want to thank for all your attention and like, enthusiasm for collecting the samples. And they did everything by themselves. All I did was demonstrate, and they actually collected all the data themselves, which was awesome. And this is the first time I've never had to measure a rock at a cabin site. They did all 100 for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So thanks again, guys. Yeah, a bunch of highlights for me too. But I wanted to say that uh, um, I kept remembering that word that was used in the Berger Inquiry report, homeland. And, you know, uh, when I was growing up down, like when I was down south, I learned that a lot of people, when they go out in the bush, they think of it as roughing it. Whereas uh, when you get to live with people in their homeland, they're actually making, they're just keeping the home up. And so uh, the, the way in which this place became a home for everybody really fast is just amazing to me. But also that people were able to make a home and at the same time be doing research, that's incredible. What I'm really like fascinated was how you could tell by the age of the plant without cutting the whole tree down. Like, that was the old school way. You cut the whole tree down, you count the rings. But this time, you get to drill a hole right in there and then take a big chunk out of it. That was really interesting. And when we did the water, um, I was fascinated how you could tell how clean the water is by just the bugs. Yeah, the permafrost. Yeah, that really wowed me. I've never seen permafrost before, and it, the the feeling of getting to touch it and like dig it out a little bit and everything was really awesome. Like, I thought you had to dig about ten feet to get to permafrost. I was wrong. And I'm really proud of the dry fish makers. Yeah. Boy, I'm really proud of them. They took it to like fish takes to water. <laughs> I mean, you know. They're all making dry fish, and today I didn't even have to. And I even learned birds. <laughs> and you no, know, I learned to listen to the your recording there, bird song. That I I might have heard it all the time, but I just didn't, you know, listen to it. But I was singing now, trying to listen for birds. <laughs> so you know, I'm learning every day. So when I first came out here and I was supposed to do the small mammal trapping, I didn't think anybody would be interested in it at all. <laughs> and I'm surprised to find out like the majority of the people that are interested in it are the older people, <laughs> which is awesome.
So in the bog black spruce, we caught one vole. And in the mixed uh, forest, we, were, we caught two voles, a squirrel. And today we put the traps out into the cut line. So that'll be interesting to find out what we catch from there and see if there's any difference or what. And I definitely will recommend you monitors if we do have projects on the go and we'll put your names out there. Sometimes maybe in Good Hope we used to get researchers in to do what they have to do. And sometimes I always didn't look at the positive side of it. And so I always questioned them. Why do you do this or you know why why they bother something that so I learned how to listen and uh, try to understand why the reason why we're here. And so I got a basic understanding of that now, so that really helped me. <coughs> I learned how to use the GPS a little bit more. Also how the traps work. Some of the things that the elders have said. Sometimes we do research. We do studies without talking to the people, without talking to anybody. And here we see a research going on. Who's doing it? Who's authorized it? Who's funding it? Like, that has to stop. Elders are saying, we need to be consulted. We need to know before you even request for funding or even have an idea. Bring it to the people, the elders. And then, They'll help you put something good together and then we can go and do research. So that's been happening in the past and we don't want that to happen anymore. We want the, to know what's going to happen ahead of time before you put it on paper. So that is something that researchers, scientists, government, industry should realize that. Industry, I said, they do studies and they don't share it. And that's not right for us. We need to be involved. We need to know what they've studied, what, what the results were, you know. But that's not happening with industry. So that's the problem. There's, there's some gaps in some of this stuff that we're doing. And the studies that we do, what we're doing here, is for our people, our young people, our future generations. Not for the government, not for the industry. That has to be clear. And we would like to know more about the environmental stuff, especially with the land. Because the climate is always changing and every year it changes. And we want to understand that more so we get healthy elders in town. Understand what, what people are doing in the industries. Mainly with the scientific terms with their little gadgets and all that. And like... The elders, they don't know what they're doing. All they see is little screens and buttons and all that. It'd be a lot better to help them understand what we're doing because the elders think that they're doing what they're doing is destroying the land and it kind of scares them. I open up towards um, what I felt of pursuing um, education. You know, I, I was I was scared because you know I don't want to leave home. I, you know, I want to stay here and try to make a change and um, protect protect what's what belongs um, in the north and um, trying to create, um, I guess, I guess development from happening because it's it's in ways destroying destroying um, our land. But for me to do that, you know, I have to be overcome that fear and say you know i have to I have to get an education to um be able to protect this place you know to have that um thing in my back pocket to say hey you know this 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 is what's in the water this is this is what's in the air you know? um, and i want to be able to uh i guess be in the, you know some of these researchers shoes as well to um help me reaffirm myself and um, I guess back myself up when it comes to um, development. You know, I want to 
say, hey, this is this is what I have, and I'm sure that all the youth, um, you know, they have their interest, and in, they this is what we fight for. This is this is this is this is the way we live. This is the Dene way we live. I think the biggest thing that I've really appreciated from this camp is, even though it was a whole week away from work, the amount that we got, the amount of progress we've made here would, would have been months and months and months of meetings and travel and all those kind of things that you, you it wouldn't have even come close to this type of outcome. I really liked the hand games last night. I've only ever attended one, actually maybe two hand games tournaments before, but I had no idea what was going on. And I had only gone there briefly, so it was really interesting to see the hand games up close with just a couple of people and kind of have it explained as to what was going on. So that was quite interesting. I really appreciate this setting as a setting for, you know, it's so much better for someone from the outside to come here and actually get to know some of the people. It's so different than if you just come in for a meeting in Norman Wells and then leave again, you know, like this way I get to meet people and get to know some of the people. And then that creates a lot. I think it creates a lot more potential um, for having working relationships in the future. And if we're, you know, doing work here, the, being able to make connections and and um, make it easier to include local people. And it also definitely gives me um, a good appreciation for how interested everybody is as well. Like I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised at how much interest there is in the vegetation works. And when I'm out on the land, I'm going to be able to talk about some of this stuff and people are going to be interested, you know, they're going to be like, Hey, where do you learn this? And, you know, I'm obviously going to tell them a story of what happened and, you know, it's going to carry on and hopefully make a, a ripple effect in other people's lives. I don't know. I, I find it more. We we're more f focused out here. Um, you know, we're, we're we have things to do. Um, that we we I guess we feel like there's something to be expected from us when we're out here. You know, instead of clashing, two worlds clashing, we're trying to collaborate. Um, not only the scientific way, but also the traditional knowledge way. It seems like those two worlds. I guess. Um, the European uh, world against the indigenous world. It seems like there's going to be, uh, I guess, a new coming of um, understanding between both worlds. You know, I'd like to see that, of understanding how Dene people live and any indigenous people live, but also understand that we need people that are, I guess, researching and trying to f find things that you know we don't understand as and you know indigenous people um and one thing that i always carry is you know I, and for the newcomers is try to think about how we go about our indigenous or our dene laws you know you, you can use them they 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 just mean something else to you you know you you see it in you guys you know you, you're kind, you know, you're always happy, you know, you share what you have and to be able to see the result of um, newcomers and other people that are not from the north, it's good that to see that we all, we're all here in together working towards the same thing and it's amazing to see that, uh, that partnership and relationship between um, different worlds. And I'll, I'll never forget this place. I always had a kind of a feeling towards researchers and people coming in and uh, invading our territory. But it was through understanding that uh, I got to appreciate what they were doing. I think it's maybe it's about time we start working together and we know something's got to give just to save other things so uh, I don't know what else to say this good to see young people get together like this and uh, next time I have bingo <laughs> <laughs> we'll be soon hopefully celebrating that we'll have our first ever certified environmental monitors in the Satu region so that's mm -hmm. a huge breakthrough I think for uh, for us all and Coming here, like, it, it's, it really made me feel good to know 
what's what's around here? All the animals, all the plants, and the rivers, and the creeks, and the trees, and the bugs, and everything. Like that's the kind of things that we need to collect as as to protect this land. Not only Tale Tue, but there's going to be other areas that we need to protect. And the best way to do it is to collect the baseline information. And that's what we did. We, we, we've learned how to collect information from the land. And we can use that when oil company comes here. Look, this is what we found out. This is what we know that's there. So when they come in, and they, they, they do whatever they do. And after whatever they leave, whatever, we do another study and find out, okay, this has changed. That changed, you know. That's how we learn the effects of these oil and gas mineral companies. And that's what we're all about. And another thing that I noticed, too, is that the young people have... I've seen, I seen you through this camp and there are some real good potential youth here that have the, the ability to be leaders and I'm really proud to see that it makes me proud that I know that the future is going to be good in, in their hands <laughs>